What is going on everyone? Anthony Drew Gary here, host of The How To Show, where we talk about optimizing life, money, and happiness one how to at a time. This episode is going to be the first of what will likely be many non-consecutive episodes on how to build sweat equity in your home. I want to spend some time talking about different DIY projects that my wife and I have already done or things we plan to do in the future. Now as best I can, I'll try to supplement the video with accounts of how much time it took and how much money we spent doing these projects so that you can determine if the projects make sense to replicate in your own home. This week, specifically, I'm going to talk about how to build sweat equity by removing carpet from my stairs and painting the treads and risers. Last year we had our floors replaced in the first floor of our house, but we left the stairs untouched and covered with tan, builder grade carpet that I believe is original to the house. Now let me switch over to some pictures so that you can see what I'm talking about. Step one was to remove the existing carpet and pad. Everything is stapled down, so besides using a pry bar to get started, this was all done using force pulling the carpet from the wood. I recommend pulling the carpet slowly because the more staples that come up with the carpet, the less you'll have to pull them out one by one by hand. Once the carpet and the pad were removed, I rolled them up and our normal trash pickup took everything away. No extra charge for hauling anything to get it out of the house. Grand total getting to this point probably took 60 to 90 minutes uh, working at a casual pace. Now the next step is the real pain in the process. The stairs are going to be littered with leftover staples that need to be pulled out one by one. I used a little pair of rounded pliers to pull them out and I couldn't imagine getting this job done without them. I also recommend getting a good pair of knee pads if you plan to do a decent amount of DIY work. Uh, I got some off of Amazon a while ago and they've been great for me. I probably spent four hours spread out over several days removing the staples. It's not glamorous work, but you can podcast, listen to TV, or even watch my YouTube channel while doing it. The next step was to sand everything down. I don't have a picture of me sanding, but I used an orbital sander and that took out as many imperfections as we could get out. The end product still isn't perfect, but the majority is hidden well when painted. If your sander doesn't collect dust, you can do what we did and have the extension wand of a vacuum cleaner nearby to keep the dust from getting everywhere around your house. We probably spent around an hour total sanding. After the sanding was done, it was time to start painting. Painting stairs can be tricky because if you're like us and you're living in your house, you need access to your stairs. So you really have two choices here. You can either split the stairs down the middle and paint one side now and paint one side later, or you can commit to not using the stairs for the entire time that the paint takes to dry. Everything was usually dry within about two hours, but this will depend on what type of paint you use. We started out by painting everything white, the stairs, the treads, and the trim on the sides. We knew the treads would eventually be gray, but figured it wouldn't hurt painting everything white at first to be sure we had a good base to make our gray pop later on. I protected the walls nearby with painter's tape during this stage, and I put two coats of white paint on everything. This probably took about four hours over the course of several days. The next step was to paint the treads gray. I used a roller for as much as I could, and my wife helped a bunch when she used an angled brush to detail in the edges. We didn't tape off every tread, and I think it looks just fine relative to had we used tape. A good angled brush can usually get into those corners, and I'd say we probably have another three hours in painting the treads. Uh, I found in some Google Analytics hardcore research that videos that have my pup Lola in them get more views, so here's a cameo of my pup. Kidding on the analytics, but I do love my Lola pup. Finally, I had to decide what I was going to do with the stair landing. Now, not everyone is going to have this problem because most stairs are straight runs, but when I ripped the carpet off the landing, I saw it was built with really crappy grade plywood. We decided we could either remove that plywood and replace it with higher quality wood, or we could cover it somehow and we had to make sure that it wouldn't cause a tripping hazard on that last step. 
We ultimately went with vinyl flooring and I cut the vinyl with a combination of a utility knife and heavy duty scissors. These are vinyl planks and the pieces are held in place with a combination of construction adhesive, quarter round, and nailing the, the quarter round to the subfloor rather than to the base. The total time spent on the landing was roughly two hours. This is the finished product and I really don't think this slide does the project justice. So here's the side by side for before and after. We are really happy with how this turned out. So for this whole project, I'm in it for less than $100 and roughly 16 hours over the course of several days. At Lowe's, I bought a gallon of white Valspar paint, a quart of gray Valspar paint, and two paint roller covers. And together, I think that totaled around $50. And then I bought the vinyl plank flooring and quarter round from Home Depot, and I spent roughly $45 there. I will also get an 11% rebate gift card from Home Depot because I made my Home Depot purchase during a week where Menards has their 11% rebate. And if you don't know exactly how that works, I'll put a link overhead to a video that I did that explains that process. While I spent time painting, I also uh, listened to podcasts and I listened to other YouTube channels. So the time that I have embedded in this project wasn't completely lost. And it's also worth pointing out that I already had a lot of the tools required to do this job. And I also already had silicone to clean up after my quarter round and I had trim nails, things like that. So your total cost on this project might be a little different than mine based on what you already have at home. That is going to bring this episode of the How To Show to a close. I hope you've learned something in this episode and have identified something that you can replicate. If you did, please leave me a comment letting me know how you're going to take action. If you haven't already smashed that like button for the YouTube algorithm, you know it's not too late to do it, so go ahead and do that now. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can be the first to know about new content coming out each week. And if you have an idea for a future topic or a guest star to come on the show, please submit it as a comment so that I can read those later on. Until next time, this is Anthony Drew Gary, host of The How-To Show, signing off. Music